أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين فصوص الإيمان is a concise format of explanations related to Sahih Iman based on Tafsir Asadi and Irshad Al-Asadi. This book series is named Fusus Al-Iman, Bezels of Faith, with the intention that it may be used by the people as an anchor of Sahih Iman when sailing in the oceans of knowledge of Quran and Ahadith. For the students of Quran and Ahadith, Fusus Al-Iman can act as a primer that will help them solidify their Iman and prepare them for facing the onslaught of deviant sects who misinterpret the Quranic verses and Ahadith to lead them away from Islam. Since Sahih Iman is the essential requirement of salvation in hereafter, it is important to have correct understanding of all issues related to Sahih Iman to become eligible for salvation. This book contains selected verses from the Surah. The explanations of these verses will, inshaAllah, benefit all Muslims of the world in protecting their Iman. Alif Lam Ra Tilka Ayatul Kitab Il Mubid Translation Alif Lam Ra These are the verses of the illuminating book, the Quran. Explanation Alif Lam Ra is known as solemn verse, ayat muqatta Fourteen Arabic alphabets have been used in varied combinations in fourteen solemn verses, ayat muqatta in the form of initials of twenty-nine chapters of Holy Quran. Alif Lam Ra is one of them. Since Quran is Mubin, its description is clear and manifest. The meanings of all the verses of Quran, including solemn verses, are surely known to its principal addressee, that is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It is also likely that the Prophet Muhammad has informed the meanings of these verses to some of his Sahaba and Awliya Allah. We believe in whatever is meant by the solemn verses by Allah and His Apostles. Since we have been commanded to read the Quran carefully and try to understand the significance of every verse of the Quran, we do ponder over these verses. And when we think by focusing our attention towards Allah and His Apostle Muhammad for guidance, it comes to our mind that the solemn verses are actually the solemn titles of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, given by Allah throughout the Quran. Our understanding is based on the fact that Allah has addressed Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the Quran by specific names like Muzammil, O beloved who covers self in a coverlet, Mudassir, O beloved who covers self in a bedsheet. With this understanding, it is most likely that Prophet Wasallam's other names or titles have been mentioned in Quran by denoting certain initials or alphabets. نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ وَإِن كُنْتَ مِنْ قَبْرِهِ لَمِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Translation, we will recount to you the best of narratives in what we have revealed to you of this Qur'an. And indeed, prior to it, you were among those who are unaware about them. Explanation Allah has provided narratives of many prophets and apostles in the Qur'an. Among them, the story of Yusuf is unique. The story consists of sequences of episodes that are informative and inspiring. The stories of prophets have been mentioned in successive surahs in the Qur'an. We have discussed here briefly about prophets mentioned in the Quran. Islam distinguishes between an apostle of Allah, Rasul, and a prophet, Nabi. Both are recipients of Allah's revelations. However, the apostle receives a divine message or revelation for a community in a book form. Every Rasul is a prophet. However, not every prophet is a Rasul. The following prophets by their names have been mentioned in the Holy Quran. First, Adam a.s. Second, Nuh a.s. Third, Idris a.s. Fourth, Hud a.s. Fifth, Saleh a.s. Sixth, Ibrahim a.s. Seventh, Lut a.s. Eighth, Ishaq a.s. Ninth, Ismail a.s. Tenth, Yaqub a.s. Eleventh, Yusuf a.s. Twelfth, Ayyub a.s. Thirteenth, Shoaib a.s. 
فورٹین موسا علیہ السلام ففٹین ہارون علیہ السلام سکسٹین داؤد علیہ السلام سیونٹین سلیمان علیہ السلام ایٹین الیاس علیہ السلام نائنٹین الیاسا علیہ السلام ٹوینٹی عزیر علیہ السلام ٹوینٹی فرسٹ یونس علیہ السلام ٹوینٹی سیکنڈ دلکف علیہ السلام ٹوینٹی تھرڈ زکریہ علیہ السلام ٹوینٹی فور یحییٰ علیہ السلام ٹوینٹی ففتھ عیسیٰ علیہ السلام ٹوینٹی سکس محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ان ایڈیشن ٹو دی اباب پروفیٹ شید علیہ السلام سیت اس منشن ان احدیف دی پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیت ففتی سکرپچرز میں سیٹ ڈاؤن اپن ہم ابن حبان it is reported that he was the son of Adam alayhi salam who assumed the responsibility of mankind after the death of Adam alayhi salam the real brother of prophet Yusuf alayhi salam has been mentioned in Quran prophet Yusuf alayhi salam's mother's name was Rahil alayhi salam it is reported that prophet Yusuf alayhi salam and his mother were the most beautiful persons on planet earth Yusuf alayhi salam had 10 step brothers and one real brother who was a prophet and his name was Binyami alayhi salam The other 10 step brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam namely first Rubil who was the eldest of them second Shamun third Lawi fourth Yahuda fifth Zailun sixth Yashjir seventh Dan eighth Naftali ninth Jar and ten Hashir were not prophets The prophets were sent by Allah in the world for the guidance of various nations at different times throughout the history of mankind. It is in Quran, and certainly we sent apostles before you, O Prophet wasallam. There are some of them that we have mentioned to you, and there are others whom we have not mentioned to you. Kafir 78 It is in Quran, mankind were one community, and Allah sent to them prophets as bearers of good tidings and as warners, and revealed therewith the scripture with the truth. that it might judge between mankind concerning that wherein they differed and only those to whom the scripture was given differed concerning it after clear proofs had come to them through hatred of one another and Allah by his will guided those who believe in the truth of that concerning which they differed Allah guides whom he will to the straight path Al-Baqarah 2.13 It is in Quran O Prophet wasallam, we have revealed to you as we revealed to Nuh alayhi salam and the prophets after him and we revealed to Ibrahim alayhi salam Ismail alayhi salam Isa alayhi salam Yaqub alayhi salam and the offspring of Isa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam and Ayyub alayhi salam and Yunus alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam and Suleiman alayhi salam and we gave to Daud alayhi salam Sams and Nisa 163 it is in Quran say o muslims we believe in Allah and that which has been sent down to us Quran and that which has been sent down to Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ishmael, Ismail alayhi salam, Isaac, Ishaq alayhi salam, Jacob, Yaqub alayhi salam, and to Al-Asbah, the twelve sons of Jacob, Yaqub alayhi salam, and that which has been given to Moses, Musa alayhi salam, and Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, and that which had been given to the prophets from their Lord. We, the Muslims, make no distinction between any of them, and to him we have submitted in Islam, we are Muslims. Al-Baqarah 136 There are differences of opinions among scholars on actual number of prophets and apostles. The most famous hadith in this context are as follows. It is a hadith. It is narrated on the authority of Abu Dhar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who said, I said, O Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how many prophets were there? He said, 124,000. I said, O Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how many of them were apostles? He said, 315 a good number i said o oh, apostle of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was the first of them he said adam alaihi salam sahih ibn hibban 361 it is in hadith abu umama al bahili narrated that abu dhar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how many prophets were there the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied 124000 from which 315 were apostles musnad ahmad We believe in all prophets including those who are mentioned in Quran all of them have communicated the same message the religions of all the prophets have been the same which is monotheism oneness of almighty there are no differences of teachings among prophets with regard to Allah because all of them are honest Allah is the same who is there from the beginning and who will remain existent eternally
إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين Translation When Yusuf a.s. said to his father O oh father, I saw eleven stars and the sun and the moon prostrating in front of me قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبيد Translation He said O oh son do not narrate your dreams to your brothers or they will plot against you Surely Satan is man's open enemy Explanation Prophet Yaqub knew the potential of Yusuf and he loved him only for Allah's sake. He knew about the rivalry of his other ten sons with Yusuf and his brother Binyamin as they were not happy to see their father's attention towards Yusuf and his brother. They did not realize that the affection of the father towards these sons was for Allah's sake. This is the reason he stopped Yusuf from disclosing his dreams to his brothers. وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب كما أتمها على أبويك من قبل إبراهيم وإسحاق Inna rabbaka alimun hakeem. Translation That is how your Lord will choose you and teach you the interpretation of dreams and complete his blessings upon you and upon the house of Yaqub just as he completed it earlier for your fathers Ibrahim and Isaac Your Lord is indeed all knowing, all wise. Explanation the above verse confirms that Prophet Yaqub was aware that Yusuf will be one among the prophets who would be taught the interpretations of the dreams by his Lord. And his Lord will complete his blessings upon him and on the house of Yaqub as he completed it earlier on his grandfather Isaac and his great grandfather Ibrahim. أن يجعلوه في غيابة الجب وأوحينا إليه لتنبئنهم بأمرهم هذا وهم لا يشعرون. Translation: So when they took him away and planned to put him into a dark well, we revealed to Yusuf عليه السلام a day will come when you will surely inform them about this affair of theirs while they are not aware who you are. Explanation The revelation of Prophet Yusuf was to comfort him in this time of distress and to assure him that nothing would happen to him. It was also a clear indication of Yusuf role as a prophet. وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ نَفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي إِنَّ رَبِّي غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Translation Prophet Yusuf also said Yet I do not absolve my own nafs for the nafs indeed prompts to evil except those upon whom my Lord has mercy Indeed my Lord is all forgiving, all merciful Explanation It is reported that when Yusuf salam settled down in Egypt along with his family and parents, Zulaikha salam, who was the wife of the Aziz earlier, in whose house Yusuf salam had spent many years, grew very old and her husband Aziz had died. Her love for a prophet of Allah paid back. Allah forgave her and returned her youth back and Yusuf salam married her and together they had children. It is important that while we describe about the prophets and their families, we should keep their respect in view. It is in hadith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Adam salam and Musa salam debated. And Musa salam said to him, O Adam salam, you are our father but deprived us and caused us to be expelled from paradise because of your sin. 
Adam alayhi salam said to him, O Musa alayhi salam, Allah chose you to speak with and he wrote the Torah for you with his own hand. Are you blaming me for something which Allah decreed for me 40 years before he created me? Thus Adam alayhi salam won the argument with Musa alayhi salam. Bukhari, Muslim. فَبَدَأَ بِأَوْعِيَتِهِمْ قَبْلَ وِعَاءِ أَخِيهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَخْرَجَهَا مِنْ وِعَاءِ أَخِيهِ كَذَلِكَ كِذْنَا لِيُوسُفَ مَا كَانَ لِيَأْخُذَ أَخَاهُ فِي دِينِ الْمَلِكِ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ نرفع درجات من نشاء وفوق كل ذي علم عليم Translation So he searched their saddlebags before his brothers that produced the cup from his brothers back. That is how we plan an excuse for Yusuf alayhi salam for under the law of the king he could not detain his brother unless Allah so will. We raise the status of whom we please over every man of knowledge, there is one more knowing. Explanation It was the wisdom and Allah's mercy on the ten stepbrothers of Yusuf. They were made to realize their mistake and they sought forgiveness from their Lord and requested their father as Wasila to ask forgiveness for their past deeds. They were forgiven and were allowed to live in Egypt. <laughs> إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Translation: He said, "Soon I shall beg my Lord to forgive you. He is most forgiving, most merciful." Explanation: The above verses confirm that seeking forgiveness from Allah is required. But if we request a virtuous person, dead or alive, as Basila, to ask forgiveness for our past deeds, it is expected that Allah will forgive us. First, it is in Quran. If they had only when they were unjust to themselves, come to you and ask Allah's forgiveness, and the Apostle had asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah indeed after returning, most merciful. An Nisa 64. Second, it is in Hadith. It is related from Malik al Dar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was Hadrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu's treasurer, that the people suffered a drought during the caliphate of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, whereupon a man came to the grave of the Prophet and said, O Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ask for rain for your community, for verily they have but perished. After which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appeared to him in a dream and told him, Go to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and give him my greeting. Then tell him that they will be water. Tell him, you must be clever, cautious. The man went and told Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The latter said, O my Lord, I spared no effort except in what escapes my power. The above hadith has been mentioned by Imam Bukhari in his book Tariq al kabir Biography of Malik al dar It is also narrated by Bayhaqi. Salafi scholar Ibn Tahmiyyah wrote this hadith in Sirat al-Muttaqeen, page 373. Ibn Khatir cited it in Al-Bidaya wa Al-Nihaya and said, Isna duhu sahih. Ibn Abi Shayba cited it in his Musannaf with a sound sahih chain as confirmed by Ibn Hajar who says, Rawa Ibn Abi Shayba B. Isnadin Sahih and cited the hadith in Fat al Bari. He identifies Malik al Dar as Umar ta'ala and whose treasurer, Khazin Umar, and says that the man who visited and saw the Prophet in his dream is identified as the companion Bilal ibn al Harith. And he counts this hadith among the reasons for Bukhari's naming of the chapter. The people's request to their leader for raid if they suffer drop. The narrators of the above hadith are A. Abu Muadya, B. Imam Amash, C. Abu Saleh Ab al Rahman bin Sayyid, D. Malik bin Ayyad al Dar. All of them are considered as authentic and famous narrators of a hadith, whose narrations were taken by Bukhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, and others. Third, Imam Malik has asked the following question by Caliph Abu Jafar al Mansur. Shall I face the Qibla with my back towards the grave of the Apostle of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when making dua after salams? He replied, How could you turn your face away from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
when he is the means wasila of your and your father Adam alayhi salam's forgiveness to Allah on the day of resurrection nay face him and ask for his intercession istashfi bihi so that Allah will grant it to you as he said if they had only when they were unjust to themselves come to you and ask Allah's forgiveness an apostle had asked forgiveness for them they would have found Allah indeed after returning most merciful An-Nisa 64 the above is narrated by Al-Qadi Yad in Al-Shifa 2-92-93 Subki in Shifa Al-Siqam Khastalani in Al-Mawahib Al-Ladunya Ibn Jama' in Hidayat Al-Salik Haytami in Al-Jawhar Al-Munazzam and Tuhfat Al-Zuwar and others 4. Al-Qutbi a Sahaba said as I was sitting by the grave of the Prophet a Bedouin Arab came and said, O Apostle of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have heard Allah say, if they had only when they were unjust to themselves come to you and ask Allah's forgiveness and the Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had asked forgiveness for them, they would have found Allah indeed after returning most merciful. an 64. So I have come to you asking forgiveness for my sins, seeking your intercession with my Lord. Then he left and I dozed and saw the Prophet ﷺ in my sleep. He said to me, O Utbi anhu, run after the Bidouin and give him glad tidings that Allah has forgiven him. The above report is graded as mashhur, established and well known, and narrated by Nawabi Al Kar Al Majmu 8 to 217 and Al Ida fi Manasik Al Hajj, chapters on visiting the grave of the Prophet. ﷺ. Ibn Jama'ah, Hidayat al-Salik 3-1384 Ibn Akhil al-Tadkiral Mughni al-Qurtubi Tafsir of 4-64 in Ahkam al-Quran 5-265 Samhudi Khulusat al-Wafa Ibn Khatir Tafsir 2-306 Taqi al-Din al-Subki Ibn al-Jawzi Muthir al-Gharam al-Sakin Ila Ashraf al Amakin, page 490, Ibn Hajar al Haytami al Jawhar al Munazzam, commentary on Nawabi's Ida and others. Fifth, it is in Hadith, narrated by Al Hakim Had Abu Ayyub al Ansari, Rabbiallahu ta'ala anhu, placed his forehead on the grave of Prophet Muhammad. Marwan ibn al Hakam saw him and held his neck. Abu Ayyub anhu, said, I did not come to the stone. I came to the Apostle of Allah wasallam. I heard the Apostle of Allah wasallam say, Do not weep for Islam if the qualified people were in charge, but weep for it if it was under the charge of unqualified. Al-Hakim related this hadith in Mustadra and said it is sahih. Al-Dahabi, who is held in great respect by Salafis, agreed to his authentication. From the above, it is proved that we can request for assistance istishwa from Aliyah Allah, Sahaba and Prophets who have died and we also get the required assistance from them. Sixth, it is in Quran, your guardian or solver of grievances can be Allah and his Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those who believe, who establish Salah and pay Zakah and bow down in prayer. Al-Maida 55 فلما دخلوا على يوسف آوى إليه أبويه وقال دخلوا مصر إن شاء الله آمنين. Translation: When they went back to Yusuf alayhi salam, he gave his father and mother a place of honor and said, "Enter Egypt in peace by the will of God." Explanation: Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam's mother's name was Rahi alayhi salam. It is reported that Prophet Yusuf and his mother were the most beautiful persons on planet Earth. Yusuf brother's name was Binyami who was also a prophet. Some reports suggest that Yusuf mother had died during the delivery of his younger brother Binyami. Thus, the parents who visited Yusuf consisted of his father and stepmother, who was the mother of his ten stepbrothers. حتى إذا استيأس الرسل وظنوا أنهم قد كذبوا جاءهم نصرنا 
جاءهم نصرنا فنجي من نشاء ولا يرد بأسنا عن القوم المجرمين Translation When the apostles were discouraged by their people and were certain that they had been denied our help came to them and we saved whomever we wished but the guilty ones cannot escape our wrath Explanation Under the divine law of respite when the prophet's message is rejected by his people they are provided with a respite from punishment as long as there is the possibility that some of them might accept the message but when there is no hope and only evil element remain among them the collective punishment comes the virtuous people the followers of the prophets are separated from the evil ones and the entire evil lot is discarded even the collective punishment is the mercy of allah on future generations of the people who have accepted the faith because if they had survived their children would have troubled the children of the people who had accepted the faith صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه واله وسلم